Welcome from the North Woods of Minnesota, where I am uh, spending my time at the ACI convention and where there's still three feet of snow. My name is Jeff Coleman, and I am honored to accept your election as the next president of the American Concrete Institute. Only 30 days ago, I had three main objectives for my term as ACI president. I still do, and I will share them with you in a minute, but for now, I have another objective to discuss. This is not going to be business as usual for the immediate future, and we do not know for how long. But Warren Buffett is famous for saying, don't bet against the U.S. economy, and I would add to that, don't bet against U.S. science, technology, and medicine. We will find a way out of this pandemic. <clears throat> Until that happens, this is an opportunity for ACI to demonstrate resiliency. ACI is in a good financial position, even after the last month of financial turmoil. We have an outstanding staff who, on March 11, only 18 days ago, turned on a dime and converted our convention into a virtual convention. We have outstanding volunteers who I am confident will continue to carry out the mission of ACI in these challenging times. I'm not suggesting that the current conditions are in any way comparable, but Winston Churchill is a hero of mine, both for his achievements and his faults. Upon becoming prime minister in the darkest days in European history, he acknowledged the horrible challenges ahead and said, I have nothing to offer but blood, toil, tears, and sweat. Well, I have nothing to offer you but my undying commitment that we will work tirelessly to make sure that ACI continues always advancing in light of this current challenge. Now, this is usually the time uh, at the Sunday evening opening session where I introduce myself to you. Uh, I've been an ACI member for exactly 40 years. My first convention was the spring of 1980 at the Aladdin Hotel in Las Vegas. And it shouldn't surprise you that given the fact that I practice as an attorney, uh, there may have been instances over the years when I'm asked, why are you here? And of course, the real meaning of that question varies with inflection. Why are you here is one thing. Why are you here is another thing. And I've been asked both ways. So it's fair to ask the question now, and sharing the answer will help you understand my passion and priorities for the next year as I serve as your president. I'm here because in 1976, the Iowa DOT funded a research project examining the effect of varied air contents on the fatigue behavior of concrete pavement. I was finishing my bachelor's degree in civil engineering and decided to continue with a master's degree in structural engineering. I had two choices, a steel research project or a concrete research project. And I chose the concrete project. If I had chosen the steel project, I may well be standing at an AISC gathering right now. That research project kindled a fire and a passion for concrete uh, and the concrete industry. In one of those small world events, I put up an advertisement on social media for undergraduate students to assist me in casting beams for flexural fatigue tests. Now, in 1976, social media was the bulletin board in town engineering hall at Iowa State University. I, and believe it or not, one of the students who worked on that project was an undergrad named Ron Berg. Yes, the same Ron Berg who is our executive vice president of ACI. I'm also here because I work for a company that supported my involvement in ACI, which I think is critical uh, in the industry. And I'm here because in January 1978, the Hartford Coliseum roof collapsed, and I ended up working on the reconstruction project, uh, eventually serving as a full-time engineer on site for the 18 months of reconstruction. If you're old enough to recall the collapse, you know it was a steel space frame. What you may not realize is that the space frame was supported by four main concrete pylons that had to be immediately evaluated for suitability to support the new roof. Also, the collapse structure fell on the precast concrete uh, seating L's that would become a major concrete repair project. As a result of Hartford, as well as the collapse of CW Post Arena, Rosemont Arena, Kemper Arena, and the deaths of 114 people in the collapse of the Kansas City Hyatt Walkway, all of which occurred about that time, I decided to go to law school and focus the rest of my career on the legal aspects of design and construction. I'm also here because Professor Surendra Shah accepted my application to join my first ACI committee, ACI 215, on fatigue. I'm here because I had fabulous friends and mentors at ACI, including my friend Dick Staley, who stood on the stage, which would have been in Chicago. He stood in Chicago in 2010, 10 years ago, 
and also accepted his tragically short time as your president. This is the time I'm supposed to articulate what my goals are as president. I'm not a fan of that because it asked me to place certain ACI activities above others. All of what you do, uh, what we do, is important. However, I do have three areas I'd like to emphasize. First is the ACI Foundation. If you were like me only a few years ago, I did not know much about the ACI Foundation. The ACI Foundation funds scholarships and fellowships for students, thereby attracting the best and the brightest to our industry. It funds research projects, making sure that concrete stays on the cutting edge in all ways. It includes the Strategic Development Council, or SDC, that supports new developments, including over the years, many new ACI committees. Finally, the Foundation has launched a development program to grow the funding resources for these three alternatives. I hope over the next year to make the case to you, to all of you, all of us, that we should make a financial commitment to the Foundation, either through annual giving or other long-term planned giving. My second goal is to build stronger relationships with our partner organizations, such as PCI, PCA, PTI, NRMCA, and others. We are all stronger together, but we need to recognize that we need to operate in an atmosphere of trust and respect, whether actual or perceived. I want to make a special comment. Uh, we resolved our issues with PCI in the past year, and I want to make a special uh, shout out and recognition to the current chairman of PCI, Jay Soroki. I had, had intended to have him here at the convention so I could acknowledge him personally, uh, but he reached out to me and we were able to uh, resolve the issues with PCI in a very, very favorable manner, uh, leading to the current ACI-PCI 319 committee. My third goal is simple, but it is of utmost importance. ACI, like other professional organizations, depends on volunteers. And when the volunteers, meaning you, show great commitment and other exemplary service, we make you an ACI fellow or we give you an award, and then guess what? We ask you to do more good work. I think it's critical that we stop and say thank you. My good friend Cliff McDonald told me recently, we need to adopt an attitude of gratitude, and I agree. So I would like to declare a year of gratitude for our volunteers at ACI. So in summary, I look forward to serving you over the next year, uh, and I ask you to consider over the course of the convention of the next year, why are you here, and reflect on that. In the interim, stay safe, and I look forward to seeing you in Raleigh. Thank you very much.